What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Coffee Club Podcast, episode 76. And we have a very special guest today, I believe. I don't even know. Has anyone else been on the show twice? Maybe Alicia, but this is the third time appearance for Joe Klecker. Welcome back to the show. How are you doing today, bro? Doing pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Didn't have to do a long run in this cold weather, so. Yeah, it was pretty ha- shit this morning. <laughs> it was so shit, bro. Yeah. Dude, me and, me and Yara were just like, we had 16 this morning, and uh, Joe, I was like asking Joe, because Joe's usually the guy who does like an extra two miles in every run. He says the standard. He I got to the duck standard. out at five today. He so. ducked out at five, and then Jordy ducked out at 10, and then Yara and I had six miles left to go and Yara just goes this sucks bro <laughs> it's like cold <laughs> we're wrong. like running into the wind uphill it's tough yeah. but we got through it so yeah well i don't think we're gonna waste any time today because we're coming off the back of the 10 sound runnings the 10 presented by on oh do you have a brief some coffee being shout out these are some special ones george you want to go first and then ollie yeah i'll take it away on brown bag quick water coffee roasters there's actually i don't know how we're keeping it up with the. Uh, Shouting out tiny towns from the Midwest lately. <laughs> We've gone Amory, Wisconsin last week. Sad demographic, this week, bro. Interesting. From Jason, uh, amazing Cairo, who everyone knows by now. Um, but via Ritz's hometown, actually, yeah. Rockford, Michigan. Rockford, so Michigan. So that's kind of crazy. And Jason says that now they finally have a decent coffee shop. Apparently they didn't. Is that also the home of Grant Fisher? No, Grant's Grand Rapids. Oh. Did I he? think, yeah. Oh, the like same. Devin Booker. Close enough. Yeah. And <laughs> Floyd Mayweather. All and Donovan, Donovan, right? And Donovan. It's no, like a weird, isn't he from somewhere out there? I think he's from around there. Yeah, like okay. that region has had like some of the best athletes. Like yeah, they've in, had some amazing runners. Yeah. Holy cow! Doesn't for Michigan, like yeah. it's pretty nuts. I've been there. It's not that cool. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing else to do other than train hard no, or, or nice. make coffee. That's yeah. why there's so many coffee shops there because there's nothing else to do. Mm-hmm. For real. So thank you, Jason, for bringing those ones. And then Ollie, this is a very special one as well. Yeah, this is a special one. So after the uh, the ten on running presents, sound running ten. Um, <laughs> Uh, these two lovely ladies came up and gave uh, Morgan, George and I a bag of beans and a note. Um, Courtney and Lainley, thank you very much for the beans. They're from Laguna, California. Um, they're saying it's on the sweet side. They lost the note that was explaining the, uh, the bag of beans, but we're excited to try them and see how they are. But thank you, Courtney and Lainey. Um, I think Courtney coaches XC and track and have some young kids that are fans of ours, so that's pretty cool. Uh, they came out to the meet to watch and support, so thank you very much for coming over and saying hello and giving us this lovely bag of beans that we can uh, now indulge into. Hell yeah. Thank you very much for that. We appreciate it a lot. And the, the note that came with it was very kind, so thank very you for kind. that. Very kind. And so, yeah, the, the 10 just went down, and it was a big hyped-up meet for us. I think for Joe, he capped off a massive winter of racing, very successful. So we'll get into all that. But yeah, the meet was, it was, I'm not going to, we're not going to spend another episode just making fun of sound running because they ought to be fair. Like they do overall do a great job. They do like hype it up a lot and all that. So they kind of setting themselves up for a bit of uh, what's the word critique when it doesn't quite hit the, you know, cause I think to me, and there was so much great stuff about it but for example there's there wasn't wave there wasn't wave lights and stuff so there's like it's a bit of that but overall an amazing meet and an amazing performance by you uh and Jonas as well from our team was racing on the men's side and then Alicia we'll get into all of that but yeah coming off it I know your body's a little bit sore now but just like your kind of takeaways after like how you feeling with the performance yeah I mean I think like you said I mean they were like expecting pace lights I mean it was a we were really hoping to have like this just surreal night of racing like Grant and the other Bowman guys had a year ago. Um, kind of hard to follow up that performance from a year ago, but um, yeah, when we got there, it was like things just kind of started to deteriorate a little bit. Like Jesse was like, hey, the pace lights like haven't come in the mail yet. And we're like, okay, no, no, no issue. Like we got, we got good pacers, so we'll be fine. And then some of the key players who I thought would be up there kind of pulled out of the race, like Sam Atkin, Luis was having a bit of an off day. And so it kind of just turned into me and Woody going after it. Like me and Woody spoke that morning and we just said, hey, like I heard the Pacers are going 1335. Um, I don't think that's fast enough. Like, would you want to do 1325? And Woody's like, yeah, that's great. 20, sub 27 or bust. And I was like, all right, let's do it. And uh, well, the, a preface to that as well is that I think two weeks ago, Woody was already messaging you that he's like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. two weeks the- earlier he said, Joe, do you have Pacers for the American record? And I said, Woody, like, 26.59, 26.39, I'm equally as happy. Like, I just kind of wanted, my whole goal this indoor season was to get my standards out of the way and be ready to go into outdoor like last year, try and win a US title. 
and try and do better on my ninth place finish at Worlds. So I was like, I don't, if you want to go for the American record, like go do that. But uh, I'm fine just trying to hit 2659. Um, so that was, but yeah, then we got there and uh, the pacing situation was a bit dodgy. Um, I think I had a lot of faith in Ollie. I run behind Ollie like every workout. And so I think me and Ollie could have gotten it done. It was very nice of Puma Elite to offer up their two of their athletes to pace, which was, you know, I think Alistar was super uh, nice. But uh, bef- 10 minutes before the race, Alistar comes over to Dathan and he goes, so what's the plan for pacing? I was like, oh shit, this is not maybe the time to discuss the plan for pacing. Like 10 <laughs> minutes before the race, I'm just putting on my spikes. And Dathan's like, said something along the lines of like, hey, like, I got a lot of faith in Ollie to get to, you know, 6, 7K. Um, we just need your athletes. If they can go 3, 4K, that'd be great. And I don't know if he felt a bit offended, but he replied and said, well, my guys can go 8K. Yeah. And I was like, uh, I don't even know if I can go 8K for <laughs> pace, but uh, I guess his athletes can pace it. And yeah, then we, it was a bit hard because I know Ollie felt ready to rip 13, 25. And when you have three guys in front of you going too slow, it's a bit hard to get them to pick up. So the pacing was a bit off, but at the end of the day, we came through, you know, we had we still had the Pacers there that took a lot of the pushing the lead and the wind out of, uh, took that load off. So it's still good to have them there. Yeah, that's probably where the wave lights would have made all the difference. Totally. I mean, I don't doubt that those athletes are capable of doing it, but when you're getting a split every 400 and the split, you know, say you're hearing 65.8 and you need to be 64, 65.2, how do you pick it up 0.6 seconds? It's very hard. So I think the wave lights really would have helped just get the, the pacing on from the start. Yeah, being able to do it and and actually doing it well is two very different things. Yeah, I agree. especially when the pacer gets stuck in the middle of the pack and Dude, gets, I, I don't know. gets out in fifteenth place. Yeah, why were you okay? Here's the thing. <laughs> yeah, when you, okay, Eric Sawinski, when you see him lining up to pace, he's on the outside. Yeah, yeah so he can get to the front. That's a no brainer. I'm, I'm lining up and I I get out and I just hear all like oh shit like the first hundred meters. <laughs> it's because like I was like boxed in like I I didn't expect when I got my number because like it had nine. Initially, Dathan gave me a number that's nine, I had nine. and I'm like, oh, he's like, oh wait, that's Jones, and then he gave me four, and I'm like, why the fuck am that's I? That's even four? worse. <laughs> and then <clears throat> I get on the line, and there's uh, the two Puma athletes, uh, Kyoko and myself, and we're on the inside, and I'm looking out, and all these guys are wanting to get out and get on the, the rabbit, right? But it's just not going to work because everyone's going to get like, you know, kind of crowded. Um, and I got, so I, the first hundred meters, I got boxed in. I'm waiting for a gap and there's no gap and no one's letting me out. And I'm like, dude, do you want me to pace or not? Like somebody <laughs> yeah. let me out. <laughs> I'm I'm step off right you, should, you should have just stepped off right there. I, I was pissed. I thought you were going to like dip into the turf. I was like, so pissed. Yeah. Yeah. I was, through the grass. Yeah. Yeah. I was pissed. Grass. And then eventually somebody let me out. I was able to get around the outside and um, I just sprinted straight in the back straight and then got back in, in line. Um, but this is the thing that I had the issue with that I think... I think we talked about a little bit. I mean, it's also lovely to have four paces, but I think we should have just had two. I think four just made it complicated and it strung it out a bit too much. Especially four from a different team. Yeah, like, there's no coordination. Like I, mean, I the, thought, co- the coordination was happening 10 minutes before yeah. the meet. You know? I didn't even know there was going to be three more paces. I thought I could have maybe potentially been leading the whole thing up to six to seven K. Um, Kyoko, to his credit, actually did a really good job getting to 5K considering this the back and forth with pacing but yeah the lack of coordination in the 10k when you're supposed to be hitting consistent times it's just going to drain everyone else out yeah um so that was extremely tough and i think the point is with the with the wave lights they don't really matter well they do matter in like a 1500 3k i shouldn't say they don't matter but like in a 10k they're really really beneficial particularly if you want to hit that pace and the standard for the men's um the olympic standard for the men's 10k is ridiculous compared to any other standard um, on the track right now so yeah, it's, hitting that you want to have the, the most advantageous uh, setup possible and that was tough but I think everyone you just handle it the way you handle it and um, yeah that was that was quite interesting I thought getting boxed <laughs> in at the start usually I'm the one that's out that's what I was thinking <laughs> and, yeah um, I mean sound running cross country yeah. I couldn't have <laughs> if I wanted to you were like a cannon yeah I, I like I'm usually off the line out like in a good position and in the 10k because I'm thinking it's a 10k and I'm a pace I'm like people are going to let me get to the front that was not the case that was a really, really big mistake announce you were pa- like normally no. they say okay here's a pacer they're going 1330 like I didn't even really know like well, all well, who was pacing like, Woody and Sam Atkin looked at me and said who's pacing and I'm like 
we're, we're pacing us for and then everyone looked over and like they just didn't know they didn't and then they didn't announce the pace yeah. that they were going to go normally like it was getting rushed a little bit they'll say you know eric swinski is going to go through in 152 yeah. and then that's what jesse should have done is that if we had coordination between the four paces it might have been better because i didn't even speak to kyoko i didn't speak to the two excuse me the two puma well, there was a lot of miscommunication in the sense of I didn't some know people thought off. it was 13 the the pace was wanted was 1335 and then Woody and I wanted 1325. Yeah. And so maybe the Puma Elite guys didn't even know that they were supposed to be going faster because they came through in 36, which is, you know. But dude, I think maybe what was supposed to happen was maybe the two Puma Pacers were supposed to go for the second group for 1335 and the me and Kyoko were supposed to go 1325. Maybe the communication just wasn't yeah. there for that. Because maybe that's why, maybe Alistair thought, oh, they can do 8K at 1335 pace. Yeah. Maybe that was his assumption not the change plan of 1325 with me and Kyoko was supposed to go. Mm -hmm. So the communication there was off and you expect that uh, the biggest 10K in the world, almost yeah. one of the biggest, biggest 10Ks in the world, they would have that yeah. down pat. But I mean, you can't, like sound running are the only people that are turning up, putting in these events on, trying to create engagement in track and field and like give these athletes opportunities. So we can't obviously give them too much shit for that, but yeah, it well, just, there was a lot of um, logistics that weren't. I mean, I spoke to Woody a bit about this point after the race without Jesse and sound running. There's a chance the U.S. wouldn't even send three athletes in the yeah. tank. I mean, Grant ran at Sound Running. Me and Woody ran at Sound Running. Like, yeah. where else do you go on a tank standard? So the fact that they're you know at least trying and they're doing overall a very good job. Obviously, yeah. you always have your critiques with meets, and I think Jesse's actively working on. You know, like he 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 intended to have pace lights, and apparently they just didn't show up in time, and like some stuff is out of their control, but. Um, Without the sound running 10K, we might not even send a team of three athletes to Worlds. You wouldn't have the American record in Grant, and you wouldn't have the American record in Alicia without yeah. sound running. So you've got to give them that credit. It's just hopefully these things will get polished and through the pipeline, they'll uh, develop and, and they'll be great meets. So, but I mean, to have them on anyway is, uh, is, is awesome. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was, uh, I didn't feel like Eric Swinski. Uh, during the thing I thought thought I would but I didn't yeah, how did it feel going through it's, you ended up going through what was it 13, 30, I think it was like 36, 36 37, 37 yeah. yeah I think Kyoko and I went through in about 36, 37 honestly it did it felt relatively it's like a different kind of feeling a 10k um, I've I don't I've run like one 5k outdoors and it was absolute dog shit and then I've run Boston which doesn't count um, <laughs> so like running a 10k obviously at a quicker like a quick pace I just didn't know how it would feel compared to like what I'm used to running uh, middle distance wise I would say one thing about the 10k is you get very locked into a pace and you think oh going from 65 point down to 64 point shouldn't be that hard but yeah. to make that pace change is like difficult difficult yeah. I mean like when we went through in 36 you think okay now we got to close in 1324 to break 27 minutes fitness wise I don't think that's An something issue. me and Woody couldn't have done yeah but like when you look at the splits of it, that's a definitive pace change that you have to make. And to actively start running 64. Yeah, hours. and even Ollie, I could tell, like, because of the uh, pacing the first bit, like, he never really got settled into knowing what, like, okay, this is 65 0, I'm gonna definitively pick it up. Yeah. And every lap, Ritz is just like, we gotta crank it up a little bit. We gotta crank gotta it crank, up. Crank that's it up. the worst thing when you're leading a race or whatever, and you're at the front and you feel like you're running, yeah, really hard. And then every lap, you're getting told you have to go quicker. Because I imagine that's exactly so. Ollie dropped off at six or seven. Was it 6400? I'm actually so I'm, I'm trying to find the splits right now. That's why I'm on my phone. Yeah. Um, 6400. And then. I bet for you and Woody from that point, because you still have 27 minutes in your head and you have like 27 minutes in your head as like big goal and then 27, 10 is like secondary goal. Yep. Either way, you're knowing like, all right, like the whole time I got to be on it. Yeah. From yeah. I mean, you, I mean, you can't let off the gas because you let off the gas for a few laps and all of a sudden that time is out the window. Yeah. And by that point, it was down to, I think, a pack of four with Woody, yourself, Connor Mance was still there. And then I'm not sure what the Japanese after. Yeah. See, I had no clue who was up there. I mean, I was when it was just me and Woody, I had no clue. Like I thought maybe Luis was back there. I thought, you know, uh, Ben Flanagan could have been up there. Like I figured there would, I thought through 8K, especially going through in 1337, I expected to be there a big pack. Yeah, and it was, so, it was not like that. Yeah, I was definitely shocked when I heard like, yeah, it was just you and Woody yeah. by like a certain, you know, with it, a good amount of racing left. It was very, it got very spread out because I was shocked even looking at, so Jonas ended up finishing he ran fifth, I think. Fifth, and he was 23? 20, 26. 26. 26. He was 26. Kyoko was 23. But even 
even at 5k he was really far behind you guys really like so there was just like so many kind of different races I, going on i think part of it too could have been they expected us to go out in 1325 and people were like okay i need to be a little bit i need to be off that yeah. and if they would have known like no they're gonna be 37 or 36 like they would have been on it yeah. so again i think the pace lights would have just helped with the knowing where you were at yeah but uh, either way, would say let's say two k to go. Like you know, at that point in the race, it's just like let's fucking go for it. Like I'm trying to run as quick as I can, and then you know Woody's right behind you as well. So it's like at that point, I mean, are you thinking? Are you how much are you actually caring about winning that race, or are you thinking about like I just need to run as quick as I can, or are you kind of thinking like they go hand in hand? Yeah, going into it, I mean, me and Woody talked. We were you know we were discussing the pacing. Um, we knew sub twenty seven was the goal. Like he was like, yeah, sub twenty seven or bust. Let's go get it done. And basically at about 7,500 meters or whenever I kind of waved him past me, I was just kind of letting him know that like, I don't know how much longer I can stay on the gas here. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't know how much he was hurting, but I was like, look, if, if we're gonna do this, I, I need a little help to keep this moving. And um, I talked to him after the race and he was like, look, man, when you waved me past, like I was doing everything I could just to hang on. And I was like, you know, so I had no hard feelings for him not taking the lead. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, you gotta go get it done. And so um, I'm happy that we both hit the standard and our goal, neither of our goals is to be the, you know, sound running 10K champion. Like we want to go do well at the Worlds. We want to win U.S. titles. Um, but yeah, so we just wanted, like, that was kind of how I was feeling. Like when he didn't take the lead, I was like, all right, like I'm just gonna have to push this and see if we can, you know, still break 27.10. I kind of knew with 2K to go, I was like, we're really gonna have to close hard and I'm gonna need help to break 27. I'm not gonna be able to push this myself. Um, but yeah, I mean, after the race, when we talked, it was just like, he told me he was just doing everything he could not to fall off. And so what do you expect him to go to the front and then he would be running 67s or something? And it's like, yeah, no, I'm I might as like, basically it was just like kind of a, we need to get this done. Like, I'm just letting him know, like, commu that's, you can't really talk during a race. So it's like just mm -hmm. communicating the way I can, like, basically, yeah, you're gonna have to take this if. Cause I don't know if I can keep this going. Yeah. And he, I mean, he did end up taking the lead at 900 to go. So it's not like he sat on you. Until no, you no. And like, again, you know, like I don't think either of us really cared about being the sound running 10 K champ. Um, and so I was not really upset about the leading. It's just after the race, I talked to him a bit and I was like, look, I was a bit, a bit annoyed that you clipped me a few times. Like if you look at Eilish and Alicia, Eilish ran behind Alicia the whole race. Not Alicia just wasn't mad about that, but yeah. Eilish never clipped Alicia. Yeah. It's like, I'm fine doing the work, but at the end of the day, it's if this is the world championships, you expect to get clipped. Yeah. If this is a time trial 10K, you really don't want someone clipped. I mean, I, I had to step on the inside of the rail. Yeah. Like I went, almost went to the ground with 900 to go. And- It was a pretty bad, it was a pretty bad clip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was definitely irritated, but um, I had to compose myself and I was like, look, World Athletics doesn't care if I fall and don't finish. Like, <laughs> I, this is my chance to run 20 yeah, under yeah, the world standard. Good. And so I just kind of had to gather myself and uh, finish it out and run under 27. But yeah, I mean, me and Woody talked after and it was just like, we were just kind of like, well, we just did everything we could and we didn't do it. I mean, it just shows sub 27 is an extremely hard standard. It makes, mm. makes you really appreciate what Selinski did back in the day. For real. It yeah. was, it was funny looking at it from the outside because like hearing now that, yeah, there's going to be no hard feelings when you guys are just both honestly trying to like, we both went out there and we raced the best we could on the day. But yeah. when I saw your tweet, I was like, fuck, man. Is there like some beef going on? Like, what, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. Here? No, no. I mean, like after the race, when like I couldn't really cool down, like I was with you, I was trying to jog and my, my calf was pretty, pretty messed. And I was like, it was jacked up. I was like, just thinking in my head, I'm like, what if, you know, I strained my calf, I'm injured. Like, cause when I went, kind of went down, I started to feel my calf like seize up. And for that hundred meters, I was very tense running and I was like, I don't know if I can keep going. And luckily I just kind of relaxed and it was able to relieve itself. But yeah, no, I mean, Woody came up to me and I just congratulated him on the race. And I was like, look, I'm a bit agitated right now. I don't want to say too much. I don't want to say anything I regret. Like, let's just talk tomorrow. Um, but we spoke, uh, you know, the day after the race and we we're just like, look, we both gave it our, our best effort. We both were going as hard as we could for, you know, 27 minutes and it just didn't happen, you know, like, that's that. And um, he apologized for, for clipping me a few times. Um, and he was basically just like, look, man, I was just doing everything I could to, to hang on, on the back of you. And I get it. Like when you're kind of delirious like that, you're sometimes you clip someone. But um, yeah, so there's no hard feelings. I think that both of our goals are bigger than the sound running 10K. And luckily we got that world standard. So 
hopefully we can go to Worlds and, and represent U.S. well. Mm-hmm. I'd be really happy if there was beef, though. <laughs> I mean, like, no, there's a rivalry. I would say there's, there's a rivalry. rivalry. Which like, is good, because rivalry. if he is, I mean, there is still questions surrounding um, Michael, Michael Smith as his coach. Okay. There is questions. If we could get a rivalry between Dason Ritzenhain and Michael Smith... <laughs> The Michael Smith Collective and too, the OEC Collective. When we I could waved have a Woody here. to go around me, Mike Smith told him every lap, he's saying, Woody, you're going to have to go around him if we want to get under 27. You're going to have to get to the front. And so I'm hearing that. And I'm yeah. like, okay, Woody. Like The wave was more of like, this is your time. Like Go around me. Like I, I'm going to need a little help now. But Woody was confused because he's used to uh, Michael Smith saying, go to sleep. So he was trying <laughs> to go to sleep. Yeah. He's clipping Joe. And then Mike Smith's like, no, don't go to sleep. Like Go and help uh, Joe with the yeah. lead. I think the one reason time. a 10K can be different than like a 15 is like I'm hearing Mike Smith and Dathan every lap giving you these instructions. That's, yeah. And so people who are like watching it think like, oh, like he's, you know, trying to wave Woody to the front. He doesn't go to the front, whatever. Like he's pissed. It's like, no, like I'm hearing his coach tell him to go to the front every lap. I'm hearing Dathan say we need to pick it up. And it's like. And you're doing everything you can. And I'm doing everything I can. I'm like. I mean, like we're gonna we're gonna have to exchange these leads a little bit if we're gonna if we're gonna get this back going because obviously our same goal was yeah. sub twenty seven or bust as yeah, yeah. as what he said. So, um, did you guys see what you needed to run the last lap in when you came by? I was because I thought you came right at like twenty sixteen. Right, right, like, right at 20, it was like yeah, you need yeah. like fifty nine point nine. It was probably because I think I closed in fifty six yeah. and he was fifty five. So yeah, it was probably like twenty seven point yeah, but or twenty seven ten. Um, at that point, I was like. Let's just get the world standard, and I don't know how the world ranking works, but I think I'm ranked like eighth in the world now. And if that doesn't get me to Paris, then Should carry shit, you. you know, <laughs> I'll just do the five k, I guess. <laughs> no, I mean at the end of the day, yeah, it's cool to once again have another amazing ten k on U.S. soil. That's, you know, the whole race is kind of set up here, and it's run by all these U.S. based athletes. Just the fact that year after year now it seems like that's going to be doable, mm-hmm. I think is good and something that people can rely on because people used to always rely on the Stanford, Peyton Jordan 10K yep. and COVID, that one shut down and now this one has popped up and it's just good. It's just really good to have a race like that on the calendar that you can rely on year to year to go. Like a 10K, being able to do that closer to home, I think is like really nice. Doing it this time of year, super nice as mm-hmm. well because – as you, I think you said the weather was like really oh, nice. Oh, the weather was just unbelievably for perfect. For the racing and coming off the winter. I've always found it weird how like in college in the indoor season, you just drop down and race all these like 1500 miles, sorry, and like like shorter stuff. It does from just a common sense standpoint, make more sense to do, still do longer stuff in the winter if you mm-hmm. can. And then you get shorter as you go on. So in terms of the timing of the year it's perfect for that as well so yeah and knowing too like next year if they have the pace lights and stuff you know we didn't need 27 minutes this year we can go back there next year and try and hit it so hopefully i'll be there for that keeps one. you hungry yeah yeah <laughs> they did call you out in the announcing thing what they said well they said you were still gone. into it yeah oh, was i well funny story about this. Yeah. I, I still was on the, on the flight <laughs> i was still on the flight until joe texted me two days before Hey bro, uh, I'm not sure if you canceled your flight because you're on the upgrade list. I was like, yeah, I definitely didn't. And then I also hadn't canceled my flight back to Australia. Oh, shit. So I was like, all right, I'll take care of these right now because I definitely would have just forgot. Yeah, not gotten your United credit. <laughs> so I appreciate the reminder, but yeah. If you got the upgrade, would you have just got on the flight anyway? I would have <laughs> take to. Take I mean, you got to take that. I mean, United first class is just <laughs> something to something yeah. to be had. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it, just the experience. Yeah. I don't even care about the destination. It's just the journey, you know? <laughs> the journey, the yeah. journey gets hardened <laughs> so yeah that was uh it, it was just another sick race and uh capped off what has been an <clears throat> extremely successful winter for you uh i'm not, was there any other takeaways from the men's race there yeah um, i would just say that i think me and woody are in good shape and we're both in a very good spot heading into outdoor i mean mm-hmm. obviously woody had an amazing indoor yeah. a year ago i was injured or just come back from injury at this point so i think as much as people want to build up the sound rank 10k is the olympics it's not and i think that both of us have bigger goals the rest of the year and we're well on our way to achieving those yeah and it was a great debut for Jonas, our teammate who was on the show last week i think did did you give him any 10k advice or anything before because it is different yeah no i just kind of said it's going to be hard at like 5k and you just really got to stay on it and usually you can muster something up the last one to 2k and a lot of it is like running on adrenaline. Like if you see the clock and you're like, oh, I'm on pace, like you can kind of keep going. Uh, the worst is when you're just falling off pace and you're feeling like shit. But <laughs> yeah. no, yeah, Jonas ran, I mean, 27, 26 debut. I don't know. I mean, good. that's really <laughs> impressive. Um, 
and he was very happy with it. I think just the way he raced and again, like his indoor season, it's just, he's has very good momentum mm -hmm. heading into what he wants to do outdoor. Yeah. So that was amazing for him. And yeah, some great races there. He's so, always fun to have on a trip, Jonas. Jonas? It's so much fun in Cali. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's just always dude. fun. He's always making I, comments. I will say, I think one of the slept on performances was Connor Mance. Like yeah. he told me this was his, um, I don't know, Rust Buster or yeah. race before the, he's doing Boston Marathon. So it's like his tune-up race. Some speed and, work. Yeah, yeah, normally you see people doing a tune-up race like a half marathon and he goes and runs 27-25. Like, pretty good. How many guys on the starting line of Boston Marathon could run at 27-25? That's pretty good. Mm. Like, he's tough too. Good. He's a tough. Yeah, so I think race. he's he's going to have a great Boston Marathon. Also, just again, the way he races as well. Yeah, he, he goes, was going for it. He was going for it. Yeah, I mean, I don't think his goal was 27-25. I think he thought he could break 27. No, I saw his Instagram post after and that's, that's exactly what he yeah, said, I think. Yeah, and, and I don't doubt that he, you know, is capable of doing that, so... He's yeah. in a really good spot. Once once you're running that quick for the 10K, you would probably say that you have to get in a good amount of specific 10K track work to be able to really get down. Yeah. Like more of that VO2 max stuff, which I can't say exactly how he's training, but if you're training for the marathon, you're probably going to be doing slightly different Yeah, I'm stuff. sure he wasn't gearing it towards this race. This was just kind of on the journey towards Boston. And so to be able to do that is really impressive. Yeah. And then, so after your race was the women's race, again, a similar setup where we had... Josette pacing for Alicia and this one also very hyped up with a big goal in mind which was hitting the for Alicia the American record and I think even kind of around that 30 minute mark mm -hmm. that was like the that was the stretch goal and then the American record was what was it before around 30, 13 14 or 30, 14. I know at least almost got it a year ago within like a second I think she so. went 13 30 14 at least and then might be 30 13 yeah. Yeah. I think it was Molly Huddle's record is that Molly Huddle's record 13 30 yeah, 30 13 I think that's right 30 13 yeah so that was Alicia's goal and she had great pacing Josette and this one was they were pretty they definitely just it was Josette Alicia and then Eilish McCoughlin was there as well and they separated themselves and just running away with it and then I think Josette did she make it to 5k 5k they ran, I think they ran, there was, they were off pace though. I think they yeah, were like, 1508, I, I thought mean, that was the pace. Pace would have been 1506, like that's yeah. pretty. Oh, so they were, so they were pretty much on the, the oh, they were trying to run 15 minutes. Were they not trying to run 15 minutes? Um, that I, think I don't they know. Were. I mean, I guess, I guess they're on pace with American America. I don't know what they yeah. were requesting. Maybe there was some miscommunication. Yeah, <laughs> who, who knows? <laughs> but um, it was fifteen oh eight oh nine. I I thought someone said that they were they were slowing up a little bit on it, and then obviously watching Alicia just say "Hold my beer" and yeah. grind Gross. it down, with Alicia just sitting on there and enjoying the ride, the ninety six hundred <laughs> meters. But I and then just also booked a marathon it. build too for London. Yeah, that's that's, just, a, that's a London yeah. build up for her. Crazy and man. That uh, particularly that UK record is not an easy record to get so to get that for her Dude, that's crazy after 30 minutes it comes down to like a two tenths of a second, two yeah, tenths of a second. Got it was that close three seconds eilish eilish no I I oh she got the record i think she much. got the record oh, no, 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 no. because she was a three oh, seconds yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. but no she got the british record by like point two wow of a second that's crazy i think that was paula radcliffe's record yeah so it's impressive absolutely alicia was giving throwbacks to uh uh, 2020 us trials where she said she was just trying to keep herself on the track the last lap because she, she had really grinded down yeah got to that dark place that she's so familiar with and uh came away with a 10 second gap on that record 3003 right yeah i yeah. don't see that getting broken that's that's <laughs> 37 <laughs> seconds faster than the olympic and world standard 37 seconds faster yeah. dude that, that's just crazy well is the Olymp well you know the olympic standard might be faster no, it's, it's, the same. 30, no, it's, it's the same for women it's the same yeah, for, for women, women 30, 40. Change. So like she's, nice. yeah, <laughs> she's run that. And, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, Dathan, I've never seen, Dathan was like a guy in a kid in a toy store. He was so excited. Probably you know? disappointed. I thought he said she'd go 29 flat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, Oh my God, she didn't run it. Um, that's good for a bad day. Yeah. yeah that's that's good, good, for, good for a bad good day. Good for a bad day. Um, but no, it was great to see, you know, like I think Alicia and Joe are two of our like workhorses. They work so hard. And to see them get good, like good results in, like obviously you want to go under the Olympic standard under twenty seven, but still getting the world standard is uh, feeding itself. And then Alicia running an American record, um, very excited for her too. It's a pretty crazy race to watch. Yeah, um, she definitely deserved it. Like we we talk about Joe and Alicia. I mean, all of us train hard, but we talk about week in week out the I don't train hard. the training that these guys are doing for the ten k. Like it's just putting in all the work, and it's just con so much consistency as well and it's amazing to witness but still there's 
there's one thing putting in the training, there's one thing go do in the race. And mm. uh, like you do feel like you deserve it, I guess, after you put in that work, but you mm-hmm. don't really deserve anything in this spot until you go get it. So to see it unfold and play out like that, it's like, it does make you feel pretty good. Yeah. So awesome for you, awesome for her. Uh, I think... I mean, she's got to be pretty happy with that. I, I don't know. She she was she was classical Alicia after the race. She was just like walking around like this, like <laughs> just didn't really like have. It's just yeah, like the emotions were obviously there. She was like happy, but she was like kind of just chill about she was it. Just chill, like no, but yeah. that's literally I saw her on Twitter um, a video of Cam Levens after he ran two hundred five. And it's him walking up to his wife, and, he's, and he just goes, "That was okay." No, he said, "Not bad, not bad." <laughs> yeah. says, it was like it was the most casual thing ever. I was like, yeah. "Yeah, these people are just built different, man." Yeah, that's what I love about Yarrod and these Madrid race when he just went like this. <laughs> it's like, yeah, Yared, man, that was his time to flex. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the guns like made the most out of it. <laughs> yeah. uh, but um, no, it was awesome to see him be a part of. I mean, like. Um, and all 200 fans there were able to take part in. Yeah, what's, what's the deal with that? I, I don't know if it'll make it onto the show, but pre-show we were talking about, there was apparently only 200 people there. Yeah, it felt like quite a few. And then I saw someone, I don't know if they were working in the ticket office or with the meet, and they said like the attendance was 200. And it certainly felt like more than that. Mm. But if it was only 200, that's pretty sad when someone's like <laughs> setting an American record for 10K and probably a US soil record. I don't know, maybe they've run faster before, but like, one of the best ten k races ever. You that think surprised yeah, me yeah. a lot though, because I feel we we've talked before about how California, the LA meets often get. The yeah, crowds I mean, a year ago when Jakob came for that five k, feel pretty high. There was there was a couple if, thousand there. Yeah. I mean, like if you look at um, so gold labels, you have to have a certain amount of fans. I think yeah, turn I'm up. sure. I don't know if silver um, label you do or not, but I'm not sure with silver, but it it did feel. I think the way obviously it's a high school track, so they're not going to have a stadium to fit two to four thousand people mm-hmm. but you would expect there to just be a line of just all these people and they got the the, the stream so accessible online i wonder yeah. if that almost is like people who live like 45 minutes away if they're like well you can just watch it maybe i'll just watch it i don't know if, uh lex lex young was racing so I would, was it lex leo <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's leo, a, leo, yeah. Leo, leo young was racing so i would have expected he's a, super, everyone to he's be a there. superhero in a that local, part of town. local legend what box was he wearing he had on spikes on <laughs> yeah he did didn't he Leo Would you Young to on confirmed. Yeah, <laughs> perhaps. Lucky, lucky little bugger. <laughs> lucky little bugger because God, the amount of stress we went through getting spikes in, and then any high schooler can wear it now. Yeah. But no, nah, I'm kidding. No, I'm just joking. Get his nil. Just, just having a joke. He's getting his nil. Yeah, yeah. it's coming. It's coming red hot. I mean, he did run. He ran freaking three forty. I don't know if you guys saw Dude, that. His kick was wild too. Like he was kicking down for the win with a two hundred to go. He was pretty far back, so it was an impressive race. I thought sure. when they posted that, I thought he did win. He had like f- you couldn't see Casey in the photo. Yeah. He had a funny interaction though, because uh, he comes over to Dathan holding the spikes and he goes, "Man, these spikes are great." And Dathan goes, "Yeah, I know." <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to play it cool. He's yeah. like, "Yeah, of course I know. Look, little, look, at, my, little, look at my guys. I pretty much design those." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> little does he know that in like two years from now, Dathan's gonna come up to him and be like sucking up to him trying to join the team yeah. <laughs> the tables are going to turn yeah but, yeah it's like Dathan's like I've been running 60 second quarters of muscle memory in these spikes <laughs> um, but yeah like I mean yeah you'd, you'd expect it to have a bit a bit more hype because like for example we talk about access right so Eugene I always go off about how Eugene's terrible access but I feel like where we are in Cali it's pretty easy to get there it's and like it's five airports yeah and it's pretty easy to like was Go there and like enjoy there. being in Cali. Yeah. Also, like it's a, l- a large population, so more percentage of people can come in. Um, it'd just be interesting to see like the logistics of like the streaming versus. Well, I think it would be attendance. more interesting at the next sound running meet that is a full track meet. Is, is that the Mount Bullsack meet? Is it? I think so. <laughs> yeah. is Mount, what, is Mount Bullsack, isn't it? Is that what I have decided to call it? Yeah, is that <laughs> what on, is it, was that yeah, the final name that they voted on? <laughs> yeah. On Running Presents uh head holes mount bullsack me <laughs> yeah no but that would be interesting because i think they're billing this one as like more the big trying one. to make more a big festival meet. Yeah, yeah more of a festival yeah. yeah i heard nick simmons will be there yeah that's, i mean that's why i'm Huge. going so. I, heard it's, I heard it's gonna be lit that's, that's yeah. the word i, I, I it lit like crazy movie is what i heard <laughs> is that what they use internally <laughs> yeah <laughs> internally they're saying it is as project lit crazy movie yeah. i'd see i don't know i need to see these numbers because 200 people still to me just sounds I'm just thinking of like how many. I'm pretty sure 200 people came up to Joe. It didn't feel like 200. It felt like more than that. Just think about how many high school runners there are in LA. There's got to be thousands upon thousands. This is the thing though. Remember when we went to. Remember we did the OAC is on fire thing with New Gen? We did that. We had a lot of fan engagement there, which is unreal. But then after a kid's done that, is he going to come back and go to the same meet again, seeing the same tank? Is he going to go back and do it? We definitely didn't have the fan engagement there though. Like maybe they knew. 
that it they, wasn't going to be it, yeah it wasn't what, like maybe they'll go to the next one knowing that like yeah there's going to be maybe magazines or you know there's some more stuff going on yeah more stuff going on i think with the 10k they should have had obviously it's the premier event for both of them but i feel like they could stack the fields a bit more maybe the fields just weren't as stacked because if you look at i mean obviously you got louis 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 um and sam Atkin and stuff like that and then on the women's side you've got a lot of athletes that are incredible but you don't have the big names yeah, like you got Alicia and Alicia but you don't do. have yeah, like Alicia do Cranny like, like what, what else, else can they do, do though like they got yeah. this Jesse got a, a silver label which is like obviously huge and then off of pacing lights no I'm kidding yeah. um, I mean they were trying like I think that the setup is one of the best 10Ks in the world. But maybe that, like, to create more fan engagement, you need to get a lot more I mean, big names there. Some, some of the social media influencers. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> well, some of the top runners from Japan were there, and I don't know if they've been training in the US. And China, they, too. Shout yeah, out China, to uh, like, Carlos's old coach. So people travel far, far and wide to come, uh, to come run. All right. I feel like this is a good time to jump in. I've been, I've been holding out on this. Go for, for it. Now. Unleash. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit... I'm just gonna. You guys can sit back and relax for a little bit. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give my two cents on this, this as coherently as possible. Yeah, this is now a monologue. I was telling Ollie and Joe this morning. So, this is what I think about it, and you guys have been saying some nice things about about this meet. It is my belief that track and field would be better off without the 10k. And I'm gonna tell you why. I'd be <laughs> we just had Joe Tucker on the show, and he's I'd be and, homeless. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Joe. The thing is. For a multiple of reasons, uh, but I also have some some compromises slash <laughs> slash solutions. Jordy, Jordy, Jordy's willing, coming hot right now, and I'm willing yeah. to compromise this on. A, this is a debate. <laughs> yeah, I don't I'm know, ready. Only one side is prepared. <laughs> yeah, I'm prepared. <laughs> I have my notes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for you guys' rebuttal once I'm done, and I'm gonna give you a reason, few reasons why. First of all, I mean, I think just for the average fan, like 30 minutes and 25 laps on the track is just arguably it's too long. Like there's a reason that they don't have it in Diamond Leagues anymore. There's a reason, like, I think that's a big reason why there weren't that many people there. And I think mostly in time trial situations, it unfortunately doesn't make great TV. It just doesn't. Like, I think that's the reality. When you get a 10K time trial, it's just too long before something happens. For and that's coming from me and I'm very biased and I was very invested in what my teammates are going to do. And I know every single 400 split, I know every single mile split. And, but there's most people out there are just like, we want people just to watch it for entertainment purposes. But if you don't know those things, it, it's pretty hard to follow. And I think, you know, people say that there's a lot of like the 10K provides another opportunity in in track and field like that's why it's there it's historic but I think I'm one of and I'm pretty sure a growing number of people that think there are too many events in track and field like I know there's people that think that and maybe you know there are more events than just the 10k but probably don't need to get into that but there's I think there's too many events in track and field but there's also so many opportunities in track and field like it's such an oversaturated market like just last weekend I'm so happy that for Jonas and like 27, 26 is great. Like that's awesome. Second fastest Swiss person of all time. Purely for entertainment purposes, I would have rather watch him run Europeans the same weekend. I, w- I watch pretty much every single European race from like 800 to 3K. And I'm gonna be honest, I didn't watch every single 10K on Saturday night. I just, I just didn't. It wasn't as entertaining, like purely from an entertainment standpoint. And I think the fact that and I don't think it's the athlete's fault. And like we said earlier, like, you know, maybe we shouldn't be making fun of sound running all the time because they are like pretty much the only ones doing anything to provide the opportunity. And, you know, I have a huge amount of respect for them and for Jeff as well, who, I mean, I missed, he like posted some stuff on Twitter today. I don't know if you guys saw it. I don't have Twitter, but someone was reposting it about like, Wait, how'd you know about it then? If you didn't he, sort of... They reposted it on uh, sources. Instagram or something. You're not Gus Thoughts, are you? Just <laughs> make that clear right now. And, uh, so, and he's like, he obviously did a good job. He's very passionate about it. And he was saying like, pop-up meets, you know, he doesn't want pop-up meets to be the future of checking field, which is what Sound Rain is at the moment. And that's just kind of the reality of it. And I think there's just not enough, but it's like, they're there. They've provided the sound run opportunity because of 
what world athletics has has created like world athletics has forced people to take this huge chunk of the season to focus on something that isn't very entertaining for the population like 2017 27 minutes we're talking about earlier like i mean this whole this whole indoor season was building up to the 10k i would have done i would have loved to go race some other stuff but i had to do world athletics has like forced the situation where people have to give up a big chunk of time before a race a big chunk of time afterwards like people got to say no to europeans people got to say no to usas just to try and get this thing done and getting this thing done a i think isn't very entertaining and b like joe said earlier like 27 minutes was on if just if maybe if they went out in in 1325 and now we've got like you lose out on, on an olympic standard something like that world athletics has made so important just because like this one night in california doesn't quite go to plan in the first 10 minutes mm-hmm. and now like an, an entire 18 month stretch has been like affected like no shit we've just seen joe and woody run 1254 and 1251 no shit they can run the olympic standard like why do they have to go prove that they're good enough to run the olympics in the 10k when like we already know that shit why do they have to go to california kind of a thought yeah <laughs> like do you think the 10k at worlds is interesting because i would say so you, the 10k at worlds is interesting this is my compromise but no here's my comp- here's what i'm saying <laughs> do you think that because a 5k is obviously much easier to recover from to do much more interesting and like you don't have to build your whole six months around a 5k yeah do you think that a 5k standard should count for a 10k and then you wouldn't have to do these because i don't personally i don't care about time for a 10k like like when i was talking to woody before the race, 2659 or 2639, I don't care. Mm-hmm. I want to go to Worlds and inc- improve on my ninth place finish. That's yeah. what I care about. Yeah. And so... Being able to run 27 minutes in, in March has no bearing. Yeah, and I, mean, I I think I told all you guys this. Like I was like, dude, the 10K sucks. Like I just want to get this sound running yeah. over with and be ready to go race outdoor. And like, Milrose is my most fun race of the indoor season, an actual race. Yeah, yeah. And so I, 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 I see where you're coming from with like... I'm not trying to help Lord Co here, but there isn't that Waterflex has offered the option of the the 10k road. Yeah, and this is one of the compromise. Yeah. yeah, so that like because that is actually I think it's going to change the way the 10k is qualified for. Because yeah. I do agree with you guys in the sense that if I'm watching a 10k Olympics Worlds, yeah, maybe USA's. I think but that's like, probably, those are the most entertaining races for 10k. They're probably never going to take away the 10k at Worlds Olympics, and maybe they shouldn't. Like, there's a lot of history track and field's fucking obsessed with history we're always talking about how that is is slightly holding us back a bit with the obsession with the olympics but if they're going to make it possible to qualify on the roads then let's just take time trial 10ks let's just not have them at all and let's just have people qualify on the roads you don't need a b heat of the 10k like the infrastructure is already there there's no you know we don't need this pop-up grassroots because it is a grassroots meet I'm all for grassroots track and field, but what do you what do you say? Roots running track and field. Woody, yeah. and, oh, no, Woody and Grant, uh, Woody and Grant and Joe aren't at a grassroots level. Why are they in grassroots meets? Yeah. because like yeah. they don't exist. That's like putting Max Verstappen and Checo on a shitty. Well, I would yeah, say this exactly. It's like meet. having them drive around this. I would I say know. this, like you were saying, drive around. We Costco. couldn't. Yeah. We couldn't. <laughs> Costco fucking parking lot or something. We couldn't do US indoors because we had to get ready for this 10k. And you have runners like Woody who are incredibly entertaining to watch, as we know, his kicks amazing. And you're preventing him from doing races that like people would love to see him in, yeah. Because he has to do his 10k. I think it's easy enough. Is like you hit the 5k standard that counts as a 10k. What, yeah. Like most 5k, most guys who run under 1307, which is the standard, uh, could probably hit the 10k standard. There obviously there's some anomalies, and but not everyone would want to do the 10k. Like mm-hmm. if all he wanted to do the 5k and he hit the standard, he wouldn't be like, oh, I qualified in the 10K, let's do that. Well, he would still have to get picked by his country. And he would still have to get picked. So that's the thing, is like USATF, yes, still have the USA trials, to, but like as far as the World Athletic Standard, yeah, just I think that the 10, 10K versus the other events is something they need to address. But also in the marathon, for the US, if the, the, there is a time standard, but if you're top three at the US trials, you make the team because the US marathon trials is like a gold label meet mm-hmm. or something if you win it that counts as the standard that's 100 percent what the 10k needs. that's what the 10k should be like if yeah. we had if instead of going to california and running in front of 200 people if you went to like the biggest 10k road race in the country everyone went there and made it like and maybe had a couple of like golden ticket races for the year like 
maybe the conditions don't matter. You don't have to rely on pacing, top wave 10. lights. You just get the standard by being top place. ten. At, and then uh, you get to watch an entertaining race. Like, like I would watch that. Like say, say Valencia this year, which is a race yeah. that a lot of people use to hit the standard for the ten k. But say it was like okay, if you're top ten at Valencia, you get the standard. Yeah, how, make, you, how, you know how many people would have been in Valencia? How many 10K runners sick. would have been in Valencia? Yeah. Like, everyone would have been there. That's, that's like, world, world Cross is already like that, right? Top, top eight, eight or 15, eight, 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 whatever it is. Like, yeah. that's cool. Like, yeah, I think that's good. It should be more of that because to me, from your arguments, I think a lot of them are valid. But when I hear it, I don't actually think your issue is with the 10K specifically. I feel like it's more of the system the system 100%. and how it's been think, created now yeah. with how hard it is to hit that qualifier and how that just what and athletics thought in some weird way that bringing <laughs> these rankings in was going to make mean oh people will go and race I don't even understand the ranking like, <laughs> but it just makes it like, so much harder and it causes us to do all this stuff yeah, if we lived in a world where everyone could qualify easily and then they could do all the races that they wanted to do and they knew that were actually the way to qualify was to go come top three at USA's view, for example. Mm-hmm. Like you didn't have to have all this stress about running a time now. You knew that top three at USA's that's what would get it done. You would have so much freedom now to do all these fun mm-hmm. races and do all this cool stuff because I do agree with you. Like I don't agree that the 10K inherently is boring because I actually think it's one of the most exciting races. I I find it really fun to watch, but watch things unfold there's like yeah. good team dynamics at worlds with countries working together and stuff yeah so. like it's one of those races where when you're watching the worlds and you're there in person the tension is just rising rising and falling. Like i think i think it is an amazing race i think uh i don't think it's a bad thing that a lot of people do the 5k 10k double i think like they're different enough still they're very similar like and this i think they're similar and different enough that it works out well if someone can pull off the 5k 10k double they they're going to be legend yeah like forever like it's not easy to do but i i just love the 10k i definitely see where you're coming from i think it's just comes back to it all it always comes back to some of the things that we always talk about where it's just like you got to find the right way to highlight the event and with the 10k yeah. right now everything they're doing is just killing it yeah well i think you got to find the right way to to make these amazing races like Woody probably would have done Milrose if he didn't have to do the 10K. You throw mm-hmm. Woody in that 3K, and all of a sudden you have Josh Kerr, Cooper Tier, Luis. Like uh, you got like it was just like that was one of the most amazing races. But yet there were yeah. still people who didn't do it because they had a 10K that they had to do. And like, what's more, how many viewers like what Milrose has thousands of people there. Yeah, that's one of the big problems. You can't like create legacy yeah. just by just by saying something good, like you said. You and Woody didn't care about being the sound running 10K champ. No shit. Yeah. It doesn't matter. No one. Yeah, Woody didn't message me the day of the race and say, sound run 10K champ or bust. You said sub 27 or bust. Yeah. So. It like, and just- that's what's entertaining is watching people try and win. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm more just sick of the process of getting to the world championship 10K final, which I am prepared to watch. And the, the problem, the other problem with having a hard 10K weeks, months out from something good is that because it takes so much out of your body, like Joe here is pretty beat up after it, that means that like it fucks the regular season, which I'd love to talk about more. With, well, yeah, with, like I'm not racing Kevin for about. three months. I'd love to go race the yeah. Diamond League 3K in Doha. And Nathan's like, no, no, it's too close to the, you need to train. It's too close to the 10K. Like it's just, there's yeah. so many well, repercussions. What we want to create in the sport is all the top athletes running high quality races with a high frequency and the 10k doesn't allow you to do that because it takes it takes too much out of you that you have to give up on actual opportunities to to be entertaining to do something fun and that's also what i think one of the best things that super shoes has allowed and what a road race like super shoes allow people to recover faster to race more and like to be less beat up after race and then therefore race more and you know we get we get better match up we get more races marathoners are doing like four marathons yeah. a year now and that, I mean, that's, that's so good for the sport like, yeah who, who cares that you know it's maybe not as pure as it used to be but like the best way to be entertaining is to feel good all the time mm-hmm. and therefore race each other more and and race people at, at high quality events mm-hmm. the fact totally. that the fact that it's an annoyance like it's a massive the fact that it's simultaneously a massive race your biggest race of the winter and also just an annoyance that yeah, you're like I yeah. just gotta go it do this it was the one I was least excited about I just <laughs> like, gotta go do this that's something there's something profoundly wrong with that because we only race in a good year between 10 and 20 times and you want to have 
every single one of those races be something that people can get excited about because you're doing it at the top level mm -hmm. if you're doing it at the top level every single one of those should be an opportunity to try and do something amazing for yourself and for the fans and the fact that it's not that because of the system i would say yeah that's a real shame because you know 20 2012 maybe I might, I might be getting confused no 2016 i think the standard was 28 minutes yeah it yeah. got down to like 28 minutes and i'm not saying it should necessarily be 28 minutes and with like the shoes and how much better but what if it was 27.45 or yeah. something like that where you could you could do I mean it's still, you still have to go do it the other thing I'll say is like they just need to figure out a system for the 10k to get the best at, best athletes on the line at Worlds but then the best athletes in the 10k it's not like they're just 10k runners like Woody could go run a mile and it'd be super entertaining. Like Grant can run, you know, he goes and races yard in a 3k in Spain. It's super entertaining. You're this, showing that you're, you're, you're in the top three kind of 3k runners in the country. So mm. like you don't need to prove that you can you can do this 10k so many months out. Like Wood Athletics has to look at it. Like how did they write that down? You're like, Phew, 27 minutes. This, this is such a good idea. And then uh, they're watching this like tiny meat pop up in california thinking yeah that's what we were aiming for yeah like that's what we wanted to happen out of this like how the fuck is that what they were aiming out of this like this is we got to go back the party, to the, 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 the super league it? the super league we've been talking yeah, about oh, obviously that is yeah. the this dream. is the solution we're talking about the problem and the solution we know about we've been talking about it for, for weeks the how do you I, make I, it to make the global championship the harder it is to do that the worse you make the regular season mm. and track and field because the whole point the be to season, get the like, best athletes on the line of worlds yeah, yeah because it's the most entertaining yeah and ideally, but I do you have one the, more ideal you have the best athletes racing each other as much all as possible all the regular season yeah instead of focusing on getting the super time they should be providing entertainment they should be yeah. racing each other they should add us in europeans yeah put a straight <laughs> <in>. <laughs> yeah, I would, i'd race europeans i'd fucking race europeans bro <laughs> no i was gonna backtrack a little bit and just say uh if the standards are the way they are and everything i don't think it should be on sound running and jesse williams to set up these situations why is usatf not 100%. coming forward with okay. like why are they not putting pace lights paying people like ollie to come pace and saying, okay, this is going to be the 10K where we try and get the standard. Because if there wasn't sound running, like I said, we might not send a full team to Worlds in the 10K. And as one of the most highly funded federations, as one of the you know most very, like... Max fucking Seagull would fund it out of his okay. back pocket. This is yeah. the thing. Max Seagull... Like, how does that look when you don't send a full team? In yeah, an yeah event? it's fucking dog it's shit. Like, that's, that's a failure. You it's know what annoys me about it the most is that like this 10K was going on and then this thing came up on Twitter. Now it's social media. It's the way you know things are. Sometimes things that annoy you. I saw that said Coco Pops and fucking Max Seagull did a podcast together talking about athletics. Right? These are two people that are so disconnected from the sport, in my opinion. In my opinion, so disconnected from like the roots, the problems. You know what they talked about on the podcast for forty-five minutes? Their love of jazz. That's what the sport needs. That's what the sport needs. Not I mean, to talk about the problems and issues. They could have had not about a, the a jazz and issues concert going yeah, yeah. during the tank. Dude, that the amount good. of issues that I have looking at, obviously, like I can't solve everything, and there's also issues that underline everything that goes on. But then, like the amount of stuff that I saw statistics-wise from other people talking about unsponsored athletes, particularly U.S. athletes, and just struggling to get to meet, struggling to get to USA's, and then obviously seeing the money that comes out revenue-wise and where it goes. Dude, there's just so many solutions you could have if you had somebody look and say, there's a problem with the sport, I can make it profitable, and I can make a lot of money for the sport, but you also got to spend money to make money. Yeah, Isn't that the usual saying? Yeah, and I would say it's a fine balance because I would say everyone wants more money. Yeah, and <laughs> but the money's there. Like every, yeah, well, maybe it's there, but I do agree with you that money should be spent in certain places, but like, it's should, not spend you, should, the right should, place. should you be supporting the 15th best 10k runner in the u.s i'm sure like yes they would love to get money and it'd be great if we could support them but you got to look at the end goal is getting medals at worlds and olympics and where can usatf spend money to do that and i, I do i'm not saying they're, they're good i'm saying there's many things they can prove on like i was saying with hosting a tank like we might not even send a tank yeah, but, that, but that's a way of running. money spending money to make money that's what i'm not i'm not saying like you got to support the 20th athlete in the 1500. I'm saying you give that 20th athlete an opportunity to compete at a meet that's paid for with a hotel, hotel paid for, maybe even food paid for. The USATF set it up for the US athletes to, to, to make an event, like a big event like that, like the marathon, and actually spend in money and get, get people excited. And, and like, that's the one thing that I have to give credit to Athletics Australia for because the Murray Plant meet did that. Did that. They got major sponsors. They, they pay big athletes to come in like Fred Curley, um, like... Um, 
Oh, I'm going to butcher the names. Uh, Hunter, Woodall, and Tara Davis. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> athletes like that. Like, they're not the... I'm not saying that they're all Olympic champions or world champions, but you're getting engagement. We had a, a sold-out, like, um, fucking stadium. Yeah. And, and it was it was one of the best meets I've ever been to. But, like, Lee Troop, literally, he said, he was, oh, I'm going to walk down. He was there. He was going to go and watch my race. He's like, I'm going to walk down. And he said, like, literally 15 minutes before my race, he couldn't get into the stadium because there was a line out the door because they just had so many people. But that's not- Why a, is that not happening in this That's not a pop-up meet. They don't need to create a new meet. There's like- But it's a new meet. Two- it, it is a new meet. That was a new meet in Melbourne. Murray Plant meet was a new meet. It technically. Was, it was based on the Melbourne. I mean, they always have a big meet in Melbourne every year. Like the but, Melbourne but, Track but Classic. But the Murray Plant meet was a, technically a new meet. Like the, the locations a doesn't matter about locations and stuff. It's we a new meet with new organizers. Yeah, the, with is, is, the infrastructure huge. is already here. Pretty but classic. That's what, but that's what huge. I'm arguing is that like if they have the infrastructure, they've got to just start putting money into it. Like well, if there's a 10k that they could somehow add on to a bigger meet. Well, I think Sound Running will become like a legacy meet where I don't know if there'll be ever. If they keep doing this. Every there year, might never be history eventually. there, but it could become something like. Like when I was in college, everyone went to Houston, Belgium because of how good of races Short they had there. And so maybe it becomes, <laughs> maybe it's not, maybe it doesn't, no one ever really cares about like the history of like winning it or, but maybe it still has history in terms of like being where you go to run the fast times. Could I be. think it's, I mean, you see, the thing is, I have the fondest memories of watching Peyton Jordan when I was younger, mm. which was around, it was really, I would say that was probably 2010, 2012. That's when... Ben St. Lawrence, ex training partner, he ran the Australian record there. And I, that was like, that was one of my favorite meets to watch. I think 2012, if you watched that one, I Hassan think that was the one. Hassan Mead and Ben True, that was one of my, like when they ran 13, they flat, ran 13 that flat. was one of my first like track races I watched. I was like, that was unbelievable. 20, 2012 was when Cam Levins won, I believe. And so many college kids went around so fast. And this was just like some random 10K. Like, what I happened think, to Peyton Jordan? Uh, COVID, I think. I think Stanford I think just it still exists. Yeah, it? it does, but I think Stanford stopped being able to host for mm-hmm. a little bit, and yeah, then that's, that's when Sound Running stepped up, and then it ended up being a little bit better. But I don't know. The I guess Prefontaine Classic used to be a big 10k meet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I mean historically. Here's my other thing. I think that the Diamond Leagues could have pre-programmed 10k races. I know they've done it in the past, and like if like Oslo or one of these Diamond Leagues with great weather would host a pre-programmed 10k and make it. Diamond League points or whatever it is, bring in athletes. Like those are the legacy meets that have the fans there. Like if you couldn't tell me if you had a 10K in Oslo, like you're gonna get a couple thousand fans who are turning up early to watch that. People are already there for the Diamond League, 100%. What but I don't think that's a good reason to go have one where the Africans try and run 26-20. I don't think that's what people wanna watch. No, no. They should just but make, why don't they make that, but make it like a golden ticket race. Like Yes, I agree. No matter what happens. I agree, but if the system is like it is now, like say, say World Athletics is going to keep the system like it is now and we have to work around that qualifying standard there's better ways like I, th- I think in that case like the having a pre-program race at these big races could create some hype and make the 10k a bit more you could, you could put a 10k accessible. you could put a 10k in Oslo and then you have all the field events run at the same time so that people can like you have the 10k going and then people like all of a sudden they see someone jump and then they're back to the 10k like it's they're paying attention in like there's other things going on but the 10k is the main event in the middle for they 26, have 27 minutes. Going on, they have like going yeah. on. They have so you can put those to field events. They do already run track meets like that. But <laughs> I think it would be. I think it would be run better. <laughs> That's how I, they already. Do I it. think it would be run better with field events like that because they run it like that. But people get jarred because all of a sudden the 400 hurdles over. Oh wait, somebody already jumped. I missed that. 200 on. Oh shit, I'm paying attention to this. Whereas with 10k, it's it's constantly going. Whereas you have an event that's going on, and in 30 minutes you might have a couple I think we of jumps. Just need people in the throws. comments to say what they want. Yeah, tell, <laughs> like, us, how to, tell us how to fix this. Sport. I mean, Chicken Boy League is what I want. But yeah, that's obviously the dream. See, yeah, because then it but would be it, like if everyone if everyone's running, it means a lot. Then a 10k is amazing. Like because you have a 10k. 10K in I, just, I think the golden ticket idea is great. Yeah. Like even if Sound Running was a golden ticket event. Then, then that means you and Woody would actually shit, race. Like, yeah, yeah. Then we don't care about breaking twenty-seven. It's you like, care about beating each other. Yeah, and like, which creates more. Isn't that sick if it was like top five? Because then it's going to mm-hmm. be a tactical race, and then everyone's watching. But maybe tactical. Maybe someone. Like, yeah. There's going to be a lot of. It's going to be like a world's race. Yeah, like, and then and then like you're so engaged though to see who wins, but then also who is the top five. It brings so much more excitement into it because I would have stayed awake to watch that. 100%. Like, what if here, what if you did this? Say you had, say three races. They're Golden ticket events, maybe one road, 10K, two track, each race, top five, make worlds. That's 15 people. 
Then take descending order 10K list, 12 people on, like the next 12 people who run the fastest times, they get an A standard as well. So like mm-hmm. some people get, like this whole ranking thing, I don't even understand it. Like, why don't you just have these races you go to? Like like the Dream Mile, when you won the in high school, if you won like this certain race, you got a golden ticket yeah. to the Dream Everything Mile. Everything just gets so then, complicated then, I guess, because if you think about there being like three golden ticket races, then people have to be able to get into those races and then people have to be able to travel to those yeah, races. Yeah, but I will say the thing with the 10K is like if you can put 30 people on the line, like it's... That's what's good about the road. You yeah, can let's just make it all road that. races. Yeah, Shit. but even you 10K, can put like, so many people in that. A 10K, I mean, what was the slowest PR in the race this weekend? And, and that was not a full 10K. You could have put more people on the line there. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, but I think making the regular, like making the regular season more exciting is, is just a no-brainer. That's like, the goal. But they, they've, they've been failing on that for years. For years. I mean, that's yeah. the whole worse. problem. That's no, what's never, wrong with I never the sport. Thought, I never thought of that, like what you mentioned with like having some sort of golden ticket. Like that is, I think that is a good solution to making the 10K more interesting. Why wouldn't you they change should, the way, yeah, like the, like the way you guys are talking about it, it just makes sense to me that like, why wouldn't those people at World Up, because like you want to get the sport more fans and you want it to be more engaging. The way the system is right now, it, we talk about it all the time, how hard it is to follow track and field. This way makes it easy to follow because yeah, you know, know who gets oh, top the five, five golden tickets. You start to learn about them and you know them. And, and then the- you, you see the other shit falls. Like it's just, it makes, to me, it just makes sense. Maybe maybe this will come up. Maybe it Here's will be an option too. later on. Doing that doesn't stop Joshua Chepta guy from going to Monaco and trying to run 26-10. No. It doesn't stop him from doing that. He can still go do that. And if you want to tune in and watch that, you can still tune in and watch it. But it's just like... It, it, it offers yeah. another solution to the issue of like people trying to be engaged with track and field. Yeah. Because like watching, watching Josh run that is an incredible feat. But it also doesn't really give much people excitement. Whereas a, a, a golden ticket race where maybe your son, daughter, brother, sibling, lover, whatever, is in a potential to get a golden ticket in this race, you're very heavily invested and engaged in it. And I think it and would And if create... you're from a country like Australia, maybe they say if you get a golden ticket, it's not a selection. And so you could finish the sound rank 10K and no, I just made the Olympics. Yeah. You know, sweet. That, like, it makes it like, so much more meaningful. Yeah, no. things like that could be cool. It could be, it's like... There could be a much better way to use the like current Diamond League descending order lists, like World Indoor Tour Gold or whatever. Mm-hmm. And is there a World Outdoor Tour yeah, Gold? Yeah, what is the World Indoor like, yeah, Tour I think Gold? Well, uh, so you, I think it's Neil, so much, Neil Neil Gawley yeah. got an auto he did. spot for World Indoors. The fact that we don't the fact that Yarin could have like I saw some tweet where it was like Yarin and Goose. <laughs> Like could auto qualify for worlds, but he's not running in Birmingham. It's yeah. like I bet Yard doesn't even know that. Like, no, he doesn't. <laughs> yeah. That's he doesn't. He, he didn't even realize. And would it have changed what he did? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. But like, probably not. I th- like, and I think, and I'm gonna use Ollie as, as an example. I think Ollie getting were you second overall in the Diamond League standings last year? Yeah. Right. No, second or third. Yeah. Third. Second or th- whatever it was. I think that was more impressive than you coming third in the final i'm gonna because i think people as well as like golden ticket options i, I think people need to be rewarded for running consistently the year Look before at Stewie, like the man. fact that like, what, ollie stewart year, could have year? that many points Stewie, Stewie and, that many turn up to, and he would turn up to every race yeah. and be up there in every race because then that incentivizes people yeah. to go to all of them yeah. well this is the issue that we have now it should be more money I talking think. talking yeah. about the diamond league like for me Obviously, come games is, is something that I'll highlight, and I'm going to take that away. But for me, finishing the Dumb League final, running the final, finishing third, and finishing third in the points two years in a row, that's such a big deal for me. Like, thinking of, like, the way I've been able to cons- consistently perform like that. But then I now understand, looking at the system, why people don't give a shit. It's because you win the Dumb League final, you win really small amount of money um it's not really attended to like in the way in which well, it's not other a small majors. amount of money but if you're winning the diamond league final relatively it's not like like compared how, to what you how should many be of the top athletes didn't even go to the diamond league final yeah. well like, compared to what you should be getting joe like if you're winning like our biggest our biggest um level in the sport that's not the olympics that's not worlds is the diamond league and to win that race you get paid 10 grand if you think of any other sport where it's the, one of the biggest leagues in the world, they're not getting paid ten grand for, for yeah, one. I think you meet. get more if you win USA's and like. Yeah, dude. it's just there's an issue there because the money's been trickling down. That used to be seventy k, I think, like years ago, and now it's just getting smaller and smaller and what, smaller. What was it this past year? Thirty. Ten. ten for, oh, oh, 30, the final 30, was 30. thirty. Ten for winning the regular. But do you know what we talked about a few months ago, a couple months ago? How the World Athletics Diamond League, wherever the fuck the money comes from, spends so much money on. 
appearance very fees. a very small number of appearance fees for a very small number of athletes to show up and race pretty much like like themselves like they don't even an have exhibition. the rest of the field mm-hmm. an exhibition event and and then like don't reward people for consistently running at a high level in diamond leagues if they put all the money into doing well at every single diamond league and no appearance fees that would force everyone to, to go to a high number yeah. of diamond leagues we had the and that's what we've talked about before that's the only way this is what we're talking about before it's like together. with these stars in the sport they're bigger than the meat like the they, meat they is can't be. like the Rome is like oh yes we got Usain Bolt to come run here like what other sports like that where it's like the meat is like smaller than the individual like the meat needs to be up here and the individual needs yeah. to be here Dude. and like the the NBA, NBA players don't get to just yeah. decide where they go compete. Dude, well, look at tennis. They don't, they don't get to go decide at, to play in a different state yeah. just because they feel like it. Golf like, and tennis sick is an example of that. Yeah. Like golf and tennis is an example. Like if you go to the Australian Open, people aren't like, oh, Roger Federer has gone to the Australian Open. It's the fucking Australian Open. Yeah. It's not just Roger Federer. There's always other, And Wimbledon's the same. That is another issue with it is that Sydney McLaughlin would get paid $250,000 to turn up and run the 60 meter hurdles. Like... And then, not an event, and then if she's not getting paid to do that, she there's won't no go. way she's showing up. And she won't go. And like, I understand in a financial perspective, you obviously look after your, like, you, if you're worth that, you obviously protect I don't think you that, can blame Sydney. I think you... You blame the system. You blame, like, the system... Should, like you were saying with Roger Federer showing up to the Australian Open, like, it's... There's a reason why he shows up. There's a reason he shows up. He, he doesn't get paid to show up. Yeah. This is, he doesn't even get paid. You, you have to house yourself. You have to yeah. get yourself there. Like, they get nothing for... But if they but win if they and win. if they get through the rounds, they make so much money. They get so much more exposure. And it's also an amazing experience. Like All hearing, the wrong things are incentivized. Yeah, hearing people yeah. compete at those majors, it's like one of the best things they'll ever do in their career. Well, but like for us, it just doesn't matter. It's yeah. just like, I mean, it's the same thing that we talked about with like how you would do it if you had a league. Just imagine a reality in the current, this is like a compromise. In the current system we had right now, imagine if the world champion was whoever, who, whoever won the Diamond League overall mm-hmm. points for the year. If you imagine like that, then every single Diamond League is stacked with literally everyone yeah. racing it. Yeah. You make it, you fuck, solve, give, you them, give the winner a million dollars. Yeah. If that's who you're actually the like world champion is. Mil- like the regular season winner a million dollars. I would say my, my other <laughs> critique. That would be insane. My other critique with the Diamond League is, as an athlete, I don't know who I'm racing until the night before the race. Yeah, they don't have, <laughs> like, it, they don't have a as setup. As a on. fan, yeah. what if you're like a huge fan of Ollie Hoare and you're like, they don't announce the field until the night before and you don't get tickets, you don't plan on going. It's like, they should be like hyping up these races like weeks out. Well, there's right so now. many issues. This, there's this so is, many issues. This yeah. is the time right now there's to so like issues, right? line yeah. up the the Diamond League fields. But the yeah. issue with this is every meet has a different meet director and a different way of they organize and do things. Yeah, which like is another Oslo issue. will accept people months before, yeah. and like I'm on the plane to a di- another Diamond League, and Rome sends me like Ray's like, yeah, you just got into the Rome Diamond League. I'm like, well, I'm already on the way to another meet. Like, yeah. I can't. I mean, this should I turn around the plane. Or? It's like the fact that Diamond Leagues are can be a little bit political to get into like they try and get the top stars and then beyond that like they don't necessarily care that much yeah. like, based on who your agent is and who your agent knows that might yeah and they'll do favor for someone mm-hmm. if they did a favor for them so it's, like what, yeah. a, what a crazy system and like yeah we we're here trying to do it and we don't even understand what the fuck is going yeah. on and when world ranking is highly influenced by the diamond league which is highly influenced by politics of getting mm-hmm. into a race it's just like the, the the issues with these just go deeper, deeper, yeah, like deeper. If you're at the top, it doesn't matter. You're fine. But if you're not one of those top athletes, and it's a very small number, mm-hmm. it's like it needs like to be some kind of like descending order list that you can see exactly what you need to do to like qualify for a certain diamond league. Yeah, and then those like the gold level meets underneath them, they should be like diamond league qualifiers. Yeah, like oh, like you, you win, win a gold level meet, you get into that's a up yeah. into the next one. We need we need just like F one, F two. Yeah, yeah. Three. that's. I yeah. mean, and they they kind yeah. of have it. Like the infrastructure is yeah, the there. infrastructure there's, is kind of there. It's diamond, just transparent. Diamond, diamond yeah, gold, the, silver, the bronze. Infra- like these things I, are literally. I would say there. the infrastructure is there, but everything's so disconnected. Yeah, like 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 you're saying, the diamond leagues, different directors at every different meet, round. they're totally disconnected. They shouldn't get to decide who's at the meet. Like it should be like some. Yeah. It should be the diamond. List. This is this is the thing. I don't want to sound like it's going to be a dictatorship, but the diamond league organization should be in no, control it, of every it diamond league. Has to kind of be. It has to be because it has to be control of every diamond league. They control who's in it. They control. Where the hotel is, they control what the events will be at this time. Like the timing of it, they have to control everything. Like the diamond league has to control. But yeah, they the don't. fact there's no consistency and like you'll hear about a diamond league. Like Jonas is like, oh yeah, I'll get into this one because the race director is Swiss. Yeah, it's like <laughs> that doesn't work. It's like all right, it so doesn't have to work like that. The whole, so the whole system has to just be run by a private company who is able to 
do whatever they want to maximize revenue. And that's like probably like the most capitalist thing I've ever said. <laughs> it has to be run like a business. I'm it has to be yeah. run like a it business because be. like just when you hear in other sports, the fact that the Tour de France, like the most traditional thing ever, like last year, the race director was like, yeah, I made this course. So it was really hard for Tade to win and he's the best rider or you say that you, you saw it in f1 i think two years ago it was in the show where the i forget what the title is but pretty much the most important guy said yeah i'm making it i'm putting a new rule so it's really hard for mercedes to win yeah here's the question yeah. say you like went to oslo and mm-hmm. beat jakob would uh, would the meet director like that or not well this is the issue like, that we've it had seems before. like some of these like i heard back in the day like oh, the my, london my, diamond my, league my, they'd always give laura mirror a huge appearance fee but they wouldn't let jenny in yeah some years because because mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. they want like it's not fixing races but in Joe, a way it kind of is i'll tell it, you in a way it i'll kind tell of you is. i'll tell you what happened with oslo you want to actually know i was allowed to go to oslo because jacob didn't see me as a threat i was i got I confirmed <laughs> earlier because jacob didn't see me as a threat he didn't want he didn't want one person in particular in that race yeah. It was Timothy Chariot. He did not want Tim in it. And that's what I heard from that's people. Crazy. So and it's a political thing that may not be true. Because I think back to the Jakob. rankings he, and the points. He's so some, much bigger than the The rankings league. and the points don't matter for Jakob, whatever, because he has the times, whatever. But like but winning in Oslo does. But the points and everything, it's like, yeah, it just goes back to like politics. It's not just go run this gold label race, win it, you get the points. No, half the battle is getting into that race. Mm. Like Well, yeah, I, I'm not saying that Jakob said that. This is what I'm hearing from Rumor Mill. That I was confirmed in, and they didn't want Timothy Chariot there because they saw him as a threat to Jakob. And Jakob wanted to make sure he wanted to go for the European record, and he didn't want anybody stomping on that parade. So he had a lot of control over that meet. Where, but if it was run by someone where above, if it was a big above organization, Oslo, a big organization, say, nah, nah. Someone, that, someone that doesn't give a shit. Yeah, no, someone, someone that doesn't care about. Nah. In, in a way, I'm not yeah. saying the races are fixed. In a way, fixing the competition at least. For the races. No, they're trying to. If it's if it's like that, then is a company, and their whole goal is to make the most long term, biggest, best thing. And then Jakob is extremely important in the time, but then you also know you have a whole future of all this other stuff happening, mm-hmm. and then it kind of fades away a bit. And you see, yeah, you see it with the leagues that are set up like that. On a world sense, that's what have the most success. Even look at, I think not that I'm an expert on this, but UFC, for example, how much that's that's grown that's just like a private company where they just everything they do is designed around marketing and being as popular as they can in the modern day and And giving people the fights they want like giving them the matchups they want like they're trying to make the biggest stars possible but then they also know that these stars will be around for i don't know how many years five ten years and then at the end of the day the product has to be the thing that is always going to be there and the best thing possible and that people can rely on and week in week out to be a fan of rather than just an individual athlete and then when that athlete's gone no one cares anymore yeah it's gonna be interesting because that's literally what happened in our sport with Usain Bolt if you think about it Mm -hmm. how many fans left the sport (laughs) yeah like he people did not care about the 100 I mean people do obviously care about the 100 meters but people cared about Usain Bolt yeah well, I care yeah. about Fred Curley, so I'm... I'm <laughs> yeah, I also care so about I'm Fred Curley. So I'm locked in for the next five years. The but, first, but, but I want to see Fred race all the other guys. Yeah. Instead of like... Have but one Fred is meets. open to that. I, to- I talked to him in Melbourne. He's 100% in. No, but I would say, say too, like when... He wants first, to race everyone. The first Diamond League I ever went to was the Adidas Grand Prix. And it was like bonkers with how many people were there. And it was because of Usain Bolt. But I was like, man, are these people just here to see like this my like my dream mile? Like this is this is crazy. Like yeah. I thought every big tracking was gonna be like that. Yeah. And you know, they're few and far between. Um but yeah, that just shows like Bolt's influence. Back it's gonna then. see interesting the system they're talking about, like not fixing races, but controlling who's in the race when there'll be an issue where isn't I mean, against, Oslo, fixing races against World Athletics Code. So why can the <laughs> race directors, in a way, not yeah. directly fix, but in a way fix? So well, this is the thing. Great. Say, the say there's an Oslo, Oslo 1500. They're say the there's rumor that, that Jakob is going for the world record there. There's rumor at Oslo in the 1500 meters. <laughs> Let's say the repeat director calls Dathan and says, yeah, I can't get Yarrod in. It's like, why? It's like, oh, we just, we just can't fit him in. We've got too many people. Yeah, confirmed. but if there was some, like... It's like Jakob's kicking Yarrod out because he doesn't want Yarrod to take an, that record. An objective... An like objective way to get into the race is, like, yeah. That's what we need. I mean, at the end of the day, one of the things that we keep talking about is transparency. And currently, there's no transparency as an athlete and then especially as a fan. You don't understand why people are in this race. Yeah, and that's ridiculous in the Diamond League, which is the highest level of sport. Because you look at a guy yeah. and you're like, okay, I don't know where you've come or, from. like, here's the thing, what I hate to see. When I'm trying to get into a Diamond League and then you see someone with slower times than you in there and you're like, 
how did this person get in? Yeah. And then your agent's trying to bargain and say, look, if my athlete can have a spot on the line, you don't need to pay their travel. If my athlete can have a spot on the line, you don't, you know, I'll have my, one of my athletes pace this race. Well, things like that. There's been things where like, I've heard conversations with agents saying that like, I won't let this athlete, so this is a high profile athlete, I won't let this athlete compete at your Diamond League unless you let my other three athletes compete as well. 100%. So they've been using like that, like bargaining chips mm-hmm. and like, if Jakob had really big control over Oslo or they wanted to create like a big thing for him and say, we don't want Jared in the meet because we don't want him to spoil Jakob's attempt. So what you're you saying can't is- do, You shouldn't do that. Since you're running so well, I can say, Ollie Hoare is not competing unless you let Joe into the, into the race. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. <laughs> okay. But no, but that, but that but no, can I, no, be they, used. No, 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 I, and it is for sure. And I don't, I don't agree with that. I think George and- it was brought up a great ball before. I mean, we brought up great points. Let's but give us the a I- pat on the back for our points. Yeah, our points have been great. But the, the <laughs> yeah. idea of transparency and saying like, oh, I know why that athlete, athlete is here. He won this gold label, got this ticket, and he's in this race. Knowing that, it makes you more invested in their journey, creates a fan base. I wouldn't, know, I, don't, I wouldn't say it necessarily makes you more invested in their journey, but it makes it easier to follow the sport. Def- oh, I mean, which, which yeah. yes, in turn will make you more invested in like just the races and if what's I, happening. Yeah, that's the issue because World Athletics... Remember, well, they, Sal- they only you- care about the championships and that they're like sabotaging the rest of the season. Yeah. You guys have probably talked about this. I don't listen to the podcast often, but uh, <laughs> 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 like, 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 like the whole sound running uh, cross country debacle where it was uh, like, oh, oh yeah, we, we can get these world that. athletic points. We and then all of a sudden, yeah. And then all of a sudden you don't get these points. You have to run three races. <laughs> and everyone was like, what the hell? Dude, like, it's, it's like, we're again, at- let's blame world athletics. If, we're, not if, our athletes, no, that's what if we're the athletes, and we don't know it, and our agents don't know it, and the meat director doesn't know it. Like who there's fucking a, knows there's it? A, there's is a problem. Someone at World Athletics just laughing at us. Like, there's some yeah, guy. Well. Some guy at the computer desk is giggling because yeah. he knows all the rules, but uh, no one else does. Yeah. The system we made is so shit. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of sad. I mean, I know you just make me think about how sick it would be if there was a chicken boy league. Well, yeah. Well, if there was a good. <laughs> Cross country slash road racing league that qualified you for the track. Yeah, like if you, you could actually like say, do it, that was even if it was just like you win sound running, you get a ticket to Worlds. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's, sound running was actually there. pretty sick because it was it was just like chaos. It was all over the place. It wasn't like we were trying to set up something super controlled. Yeah. to like fucking all you just win. Fucking it bonkers was sick. at the start. Yeah, I mean, I it was actually the, kind of the sick. The course was hard. It was just like a pure race. And then like... You have a few more of those. Do something on the road. It. I love the, the comment from that guy that gave me after the second lap. He's like, that's right. No one gets any points. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah. But um, I mean, there's issues with like... That just threw salt in the wound. Though, yeah. And it was like, yeah. man, like... This, we show up to this race that was a very hard race with the course, yeah. the conditions and everything. Well, Kogot like, Kogo won it, but then like it didn't matter to him because he had to still run two more races to even yeah. get like... That's why we were there sucks. at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. That's why I mean, Emily Infield said Emily, that. Emily Infield in, 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 in the press conference was like, I'm here 100% for the points. <laughs> and then it's like, unless she goes and runs two more cross-country races that are One was in Africa, two are in Spain. there's only one in this continent. One in yeah. this continent, South America and North America. Like Crazy. Well, hate to bring that back up. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry for opening that can of worms. I just didn't. That was no, just, no. Uh, it's just it, it. also just really reinforces the point of like there needs to be change, but the system is there to kind of push that change I, to I think, reality. Yeah, I think the good thing is that we have a very similar discussion every month or so. <laughs> <laughs> I think that we are slowly distilling what are the main things that matter and what doesn't matter mm. and so whenever we get done with this podcast and we move into the business world and we want to mm. take make our business plan and take it to the investors we'll know exactly do you reckon we could do a coffee, coffee club league and yeah. by then we've brainwashed five to six thousand people yeah. a there's week there's got to be investors <laughs> there's, there's, there's old timers with tons of money who would be invested in dude we need live live track <laughs> I, I, yeah, <laughs> yes. Live track is the that's the solution. Yeah. I, I, that is the solution. Worldwide league that everyone has we to should, go to. We should every say our DMs league. are open to any investors uh, <laughs> that are interested in investing this idea because it could be extremely profitable. I wonder who the richest person is that listens to our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Give us ten percent of your wealth. I, I know who it is. It's Tom Wang. <laughs> <laughs> but we need that guy who did Kipchoge's Enios thing like the head yeah. of Enios he loves freaking yeah. sport and he's like a billionaire yeah Larry, mm-hmm. is that Larry Ellison no he's Oracle they have heaps of money too they sponsor Red Bull we'll take Let's we'll get take him. Larry too we'll take yeah we'll take, we'll, we'll take anyone to be honest we'll, we'll, take, we'll, take, any mo- we'll take any money really <laughs> <laughs> we're just desperate at this point but no wow. like I really the thing is I'm not just saying because I'm biased I really believe that if you did it right it would be you could make it one of the biggest sports in the world because 
Like no one gives a fuck about F one. Like no one gives no, a no, no way. one cares I don't care about, about it at all. I don't even watch F one, but, <laughs> but I'm invested in it. Exactly. Yeah. Like there's no there's no actual reason why we should care about it so much apart from the fact that it's a great system and they've done a great yeah. job. Prime example. It. No one cares about NASCAR. I mean, like NASCAR has fans, but I'm saying like this global support yeah. F one has. You don't have that in NASCAR. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. We, maybe, have, maybe we have, you do, the, but we have the product. The system is just. Fine. And I actually think that inherently people do care about running compared to other stuff because it's so pure and so mm-hmm. it's so simple to, to follow. It, it so should be simple. It, sh- it, should, it should, should be simple. Be, yes. So if you did it right, I think it could be, like it's so basic. So I think, and so many people do it as well. Like mm-hmm. it does have so much stuff going for it, but it's just not capitalized. Well, that's why all. I've, uh, I have a really good friend, Adam Peterman, who's a big trail runner. And he said like, he's seen the trail scene growing so much because they're creating just these stories around the athletes and they're so relatable. And that's that's translating into sponsorship dollars he's saying that he's seeing more and more athletes on the trail who are getting uh sponsorships with enough money that they don't have to work yeah. a- on the trail scene and the trail was never there's never money on the trails but mm. the the brands are able to tell these great stories that relate to uh just the general runner or the general fan and that's that what, indirectly will or directly will translate to money into the sport eventually. And they're not because they're not stuck. These races and this trail running system is so new. Like all these races are very new. They're not mm-hmm. stuck into some old thing that they have to, you know, all these systems and rules they have to abide by. They can do literally whatever they want to make it as exciting and cool as possible. Whereas, yeah, track has its own. That's why we stuff. we struggle in track to. It's so hard to tell a story when when you don't know whether an athlete is w- what country an athlete is competing in until the day before the race. Like, yeah. How are you supposed to create a product for that when there's not a product when they don't even know, know what's happening? Yeah. Like the athlete doesn't even know where they're racing, let alone the fans that they're trying to yeah. engage in the sport. I yeah. mean, imagine the Oslo diamond league. If you didn't know Jakob was competing until the night before, there's no way they're selling that stadium. No. Out like they did. No. no. So, yeah. They should start now, like months out, mm-hmm. line up some fields. But that's what they do with, uh, I hate bringing it back to F1, but F1, you know, like when the dates are, you know, the, obviously, you know, the drivers in the circuit, but like, like there's tickets for months ahead already sold out. Yeah, like USATF is hyping this LA Grand Prix. That's great. What athletes are competing? Yeah. Like, why, is, why do I know a, a single ticket? person competing in the meet? Mm-hmm. Do I know what events are even at the meet? Why would you buy a ticket? Like, yeah, last I mean, year? I heard there's going to be like a musical influencer there. Like, <laughs> is that, that's I, not enough to get I'm me to buy a ticket. I'm, yeah, <laughs> that's done it. But yeah, I think yeah, we've had this discussion a couple times, but it never gets old. I enjoy yeah. it every time. I enjoy it every time as well. <laughs> it gets me going. Well, it gets my blood Hopefully, going. over time, you get more and more and more and more and more to what the root is. What, that's, what what you think the is. that's what we're working towards so george thank you very much for sparking that i don't know if you expected that to come from uh, uh, that was kind of the plan <laughs> it went very well that was awesome and uh we don't have a lot of time left but we were going to get into like kind of the rest of joe's winter season but we can kind of zoom through it the yeah. other big one well all your races were big and amazing but so you also ran 12:54 for the 5k at b which is absolute bananas time is that Third fastest American all time. Third fastest indoor. Fourth? Fourth, fourth, fourth fastest like indoor and out. Yeah, yeah. that's behind Grant Woody. Grant Legat. Woody and Legat, Yeah. Pretty it's crazy. Uh, what was harder, that race or the ten k? Yeah, I actually wanted to talk about this a little bit. I would say the five k, and I would mm-hmm. say one reason I was a bit frustrated in the ten k was I was able to close in a fifty six, and that just let me know I didn't gauge my effort properly. Where at BU when Woody went by me, I couldn't hardly finish the race and that just i finished and i was like i gave everything i had and so that was definitely the hardest race probably one of the i've ever run and it was just because i gauged that effort like i was on the verge of you know passing out or not finishing the whole way mm-hmm. and you can't do that every time it's hard to gauge that and especially in a 10k but um yeah definitely the 5k and that was a bit of my frustration after uh, the 10k was like man i closed in a 56 still and you know yeah, so I you're like, definitely I know 27 was there. Yeah, I definitely should have pushed a little harder earlier. I mean, obviously I'm trying, but like, yeah, that was, that was like a bit of frustration there. Yeah, so that was an amazing one. And then you raced at the Melrose 3K, which you said that was your most exciting or funnest Yeah, race it was my most fun race. And it was the one that actually going into indoors, I didn't really want to do. I told Nathan, I was like, if I break 13, can I not do Melrose? Because again, the world athletics is set up for these standards i'm like hit my 5k standard hit my 10k standard and be ready to race outdoor i'm so happy i did milrose because it was by far my most fun race i mean to be able to race josh kerr olympic medalist it's like that was just 
a really good experience and you just work on your racing um and then you know Luis and cooper and jordy and yonit like it was a very deep field so to do that was a really really good practice and then for anyone who hasn't been to Muro's games it's just like electric so yeah i'm happy that the Muro's 3k is a big race now because i think at one point it wasn't it was all about the mile but the 3k for distance runners is kind of the best thing indoors because it's the event which everyone can meet at Mm -hmm. it doesn't like you can have the 1500 meter runners and then you can have the tanky runners and they can all show up to a 3k and make it exciting yes i mean Mm -hmm. you have a half marathon or josh kerr (laughs) (laughs) first of his half marathon debut yeah Yeah. no but i totally agree with that like if i was in the wanamaker mile i would just be trying to hang on the back but in a fifth in a 3k i think that yeah tank i mean Connor mance ran it a year ago yeah and now he's running like 205 marathons or whatever yeah yeah pretty crazy yeah so an amazing winter. Um, is there? I mean, I feel like we've covered so much in this show. I don't know if there's much else for the joke. We have a little there. preview of, of outdoors. Yeah, I would just say my takeaway from the indoor was that a year ago at this point, I was injured or just coming back from injury. And to be healthy and having set three PRs, I feel very good to where I'm going. I mean, I won the U.S. Outdoor Championship last year and got ninth at Worlds, and my whole goal is to repeat at US and do better than ninth at Worlds, and so I'm just happy that um, everything's looking like I'm in form to do that if I keep healthy and, you know, just stay on it. Can you confirm or deny if the plan is to go all in on the 10K, or what do you think about the 5K? No, I want a double. I want, I mean, the the US champs, there's only a prelim for the 5K, there's no, or no, there's only a final, sorry, so it's just 10K, 5K. Um, I felt like in Eugene a year ago, after the 10k my body felt in a really good place maybe in part to super spikes or whatever but i was like kind of bummed i didn't go for it last year and you know i'm 26 now and i think that this is the time to go all in and so i think that almost certainly i'll go after both hell yeah well i think that's a great note to end it on um an amazing winter and so exciting leading into the outdoors joe thank you very much for coming on the show once again yeah appreciate it number three number, number three, three baby let's go that's episode 76 everyone thank you very much for watching we'll see you all next week